Now notice, to three dimensions, <laughs> which is, uh, mathematicians would say, it's the bounded interior of a twisted triangular torus. In other words, it's a triangular donut, but when you glue it together, you rotate one edge. So on this space, when I move a C major chord up, Each time it passes off the bottom and reappears on the top, there's a 120 degree rotation that occurs and it moves off the bottom to the, uh, to the top. And using these things, you can understand marvelous truths about how Western music operates. Basically, 19th century music, in, 19th century, in the 19th century, composers started looking for the efficient pathways between major chords that did not belong to the same uh, diatonic scale. And so composers like Schubert would explore efficient ways of getting from a C major chord to an E major chord. And all of that is represented on this geometry. So you can literally open up practically any Schubert piece and see him making interesting use of the adjacency relationships on this structure. And then, of course, you can go to the four-dimensional case, which is really just like the Mobius strip, only now the now, instead of it being a triangular donut, it's a tetrahedral donut. It's all pretty much similar. The extension to the higher dimensions is not so complicated. And if you want, you can create a whole family of other spaces. For instance, this is the space you get if you glue together all major chords. So now, moving from C major to F major on this space of three note chord types is a matter of zipping around the cone to return to where we started. So this goes on and on. There's just basically an endlessly fascinating set of connections between simple musical ideas and complicated geometrical spaces.